We're gonna have a lot of fun. And uh, we are determined to kill a deer. This is my third time having this tag and I have yet to harvest a deer up here on this mountain. I used to watch videos and read books of this place when I was a younger lad and uh, it really sparked my interest to hunt high country muley with, muleys with a bow. You know, every hunt, there's gonna be different challenges, and that's for sure, and you never quite know what those are gonna be, and so you can try to prepare for them the best you can. Like, we've hunted this spot before, and uh, so we kinda know like what to expect, but rainstorm, other people, like things you can't predict, um, they happen today, and that's fine. Like, we learn from it, tomorrow's a new day. Like, we still have five or six days that we're planning on being up here, so. Get right in on top of, it, of a pinch point that he went into. And we're just gonna sit there until he comes out and we're gonna kill him. So come on, come on with us. Opening day, memorable day. We had some chances. We saw some deer. You know, every hunt, there's going to be different challenges, and that's for sure. And you never quite know what those are going to be. And so you can try to prepare for them the best you can. Like, we've hunted this spot before. And uh, so we kind of know, like, what to expect. Storm, other people, like things you can't predict, they happen today and that's fine. Like we learn from it, tomorrow's a new day. Like we still have five or six days that we're planning on being up here. So we're super successful. Uh, we're cooking steaks by the fire on Bryce's backcountry grill. I need to turn that steak. Anyway, beautiful opening day. I can't wait to see what happens tomorrow. I think it's Bryce's turn up to make the stocks and uh, you just better be on your A game, okay? Cause we're gonna need some more steaks tomorrow night. We're out. Tomorrow is a new day, as we say. Is that what we say? We'll take we'll take our, our wins and our losses, and we'll learn from them, and we'll move on. I'm gonna start saying that now. Tomorrow's a new day. It's true. Tomorrow is always a new day. Boys, girls, ladies and gentlemen, was that too much? Okay. Guys, day number two, and uh, it is absolutely Gorgeous after that freaking torrential rainstorm we had yesterday. Everything just smells fresh. It looks clean. It smells clean. It looks like a good day. So the plan is Bryce and Loki all headed up into this big canyon, this big basin, I should say. That typically have a bunch of deer in it. The only problem is it usually has deer in it when there's no one camped there or no one like putting pressure on it. Well, we've Kinda got both of that going on, but they're gonna be up in that basin, hopefully find something, and me and Maddie come to a new basin, and we're gonna class and see what we can come up with, but uh, day number two, and uh, still got this on my hand, still got a tag in my pocket, so it's a good day. 
Uh, today was awesome. We got in position, Matt and Casey had seen some bucks. They called Logan and I over uh, from the other basin and we crested the basin and found a good glassing point. And we found uh, what we actually thought were uh, the bucks that they were talking about and they were pretty low, a lot lower than we anticipated. So we got to glassing. As the deer moved around, there's a bunch of you know tall uh, willows and brush down there. And you could see the deer filtering in and out of them. We ended up turning up some bucks, which I believe are what Matt and Casey were originally talking about. And we saw a pretty good buck. He was a crabby, what do we call him, crabby for? Mr. Crabs. All right, so this is update uh, from Team Alpha Male Spot All the Big Bucks. Team Alpha Male Spot All the Big Bucks here coming at you. Uh, so. We kind of lost those deer down in the willows for, I don't know, close to 35, 45 minutes. And then um, they all of a sudden just came up out of the willows, kind of like they were bumped. And it uh, sounds like Bryce had started dropping in on them. But they didn't go far. They just ran around a ridge. They were feeding, and all of a sudden, Matt's like, the one bigger buck that we're after ran up, just like left the deer and went straight up the mountain. And I wasn't watching him, but Matt's like, Matt says, Mr. Krabs just pulled a Houdini. I was like, what's that mean? <laughs> he just disappeared in the mountain. <laughs> I go, what? Anyway, we started watching closer, and there was a younger buck following him. And sure enough, dude, they got up into this, like, rock band and just took a hard right and just disappeared. Me and Maddie can't see, like, into that. We can just see, like, the rock face. There must be, like, a ledge or like a cliff or a cave back in there because they both disappeared and now all five bucks are headed up that way. Dude, if you want to talk about the absolute perfect scenario to stock a mule deer, especially in the high country, it would be, I've always thought, either like behind a big rock so they can't see you, under a like cliff ledge so you can get above them and they can't smell you or see you, or better yet, in a cliff where they can't have any of their senses working for them. So we don't know exactly what's going on, but that looks like the big buck has gone into like a ledge or a cliff and it would be like an absolute perfect place. So Bryce is headed in and we just kind of let him know what, where he was at. And it looks like Bryce is going to try to take, get up above the cliffs on him. This could go down, man. This is like what I was saying earlier. Like you look for the buck you want to kill, but you look for that buck you want to kill in the perfect location. Sometimes guys that consistently kill big deer up in the high country with their bows will sit and watch a certain buck for multiple days, like four, five, six, seven days until he's in the absolute perfect spot to put a stock on and then they'll go and try to kill him. So if I was to like hand draw or not hand draw, I could type it with a typewriter, but if I was to like write up the perfect script of where you wanted to stock mule deer, I think we might have it right now. <laughs> hopefully he'll stay in the bed. The sun's coming up and they might start beating in there, but hopefully he'll stay in there for a few hours. Give Bryce some time to get, get over on top of him. This might be insane.
actually had toyed with uh, trying to shoot that big two point but stayed patient and luckily that thing worked into position where I could see the bigger buck come out. I stood up and waited for him to turn broadside. Took He was walking away from me for quite a while so I was nervous he was going to get out of position and uh, luckily he turned his head and, and uh, looked back and then he turned one more time and let his body follow and gave me a, a good shot. Oh we got him dude! You got him, guys. Oh, dude. Oh. Dude, he just laid down. He just laid down. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys. That just freaking happened. Me and Matt saw that deer we've been on this deer for eight just over eight hours we spotted him this morning at six o'clock just after six o'clock it's almost two o'clock freaking just killed him oh my gosh bryce that buck was in the cave for four hours bryce sat on that buck for a solid two hours before he came out <laughs> buck down dude holy crap listen dude. to this I don't care what you do in life, 99.99% .99 of the time, if you're successful, I don't care if it's in a business relationship, I don't care if it's in your marriage, any relationship, if something, a team, when you're successful is because of a team effort and that's what, exactly what just happened, man. We freaking <laughs> dude, we got her. I can't even believe what just happened. Bryce made a hell of a stock, hell of a shot, dude. Holy crap. Teamwork. It makes a dream work, man. Woo! Buck down, baby. Yes. Take two. <laughs> <laughs> what a freaking stock, dude. Dude. That was freaking dope, man. How else would you want to kill a freaking mule deer in the high country and off like, a cliff? That was a redemption last year off the cliff. Yeah, from where we're sitting, dude, this looks so different. See this trail? Dude. I wonder how many deer have gotten away in there. Look at that thing. Dude, that is awesome. Wow. That is awesome. Talk about. Go standing there for reference. You think a lot of deer have bedded in there? Uh, yeah. This is not where I saw him. I was watching down there the whole time because there's another cave down there that when I saw him back there, they were all laying under. And so they'd moved up here. So they're like, he just came out of the cave. I was like, no, he didn't. really uh frustrate you <laughs> to say the least i mean it's only day three it's not like we've been grinding for too long but after the high of yesterday and bryce killing that sweet buck in such a cool location everyone was kind of on cloud nine last night and going in this morning um plan was this morning bryce and logan were going to load up bryce's buck and take it back down to the horse trailer which what we always do usually when we backpack or when I horseback with Bryce is we'll take a Yeti 210 and just fill it chuck full of like blocks of ice and just leave it at the horse trailer in case we kill something then we can run it down there and we can leave it and it'll be good for however long 10 days if we need it but so they headed out me and Matt left super early this morning went and glassed um same basin that Bryce killed his buck in but just kind of around the corner further we figured like we might have pushed the deer down a little bit 
man, I can tell you, it has been a long day of hiking and glassing, hiking, glassing. Like we've glassed all the big basins up here to no avail, a couple small bucks, a bunch of does. And then we started looking in like all the little honey holes. They're not honey holes, like little hidey holes, I guess you would call them, like places that other people wouldn't necessarily be hunting. Just because in the past when we found it up here after, you know, the first couple of days, the basins kind of get pushed. And we have found bucks in these little canyons, like off the beaten path, and they're just not there. So we, uh, last resort, we just got up on this little knob where we could glass a bunch of country and uh, literally all the basins plus country I've never even hunted before in hopes to find something. We have three, three and a half days left. So came up here and started glassing. We call it the big eye. Just sit back a ways away and just glass everything you can see. And it paid off. We just found a group of bucks, a bunch of bucks actually, but um, dude, we're probably, I just did the math, like, or not the math, I looked on my Onyx from, as a crow flies, like 1.3 miles. And I just saw some deer and put the Vortex spotter on. And in my, what I saw was like this buck turning and it looked like a big frame. And so Matt's pretty good at identifying. And so I get, Matt got behind the, got behind the spotter and, and uh, digiscoped him and uh, we just watched it back. And it's what I saw is just a big frame. We don't know what he is. Like might be a big three by four, big four by four, big five by six. I don't know, it has a big frame though. It's hard to see from this distance with low light, but. We have a target, I believe. Anyway, the plan was to come up here in the morning and get eyes on that buck again. And so me and Matt came up here first thing. Logan and Bryce had to deal with the horses. And uh, we didn't see those bucks for probably an hour and a half. And then, dude, they stood up right where we left them last night. And... Uh, there's a definite shooter in their big giant three point, it looks like. We're, I said 1.6 miles last night. I think we're 2.5 miles as the crow flies to where they're at. So we're a long ways, but uh, we can tell he's big. He looks like a big three point. He's kind of like next level, next age class deer. And so we have a really, really good plan. We have two and a half, three days left up here. And so we're just making a plan, um, picking up the hillside a part of like the best stock uh, we could put on tonight because basically the deer got up out of their beds, fed a little bit, and then they circled around into the, like these cliffs where we think they're bedding for the night. And if they did what they did last night, they're going to come back out onto the open hillside. Should be a really good opportunity. Anyway, we're trying to make plans because efficiently, it'd be nice if at least me and Matt were camped closer because these guys can ride horses to get into glassing. But so we're making just, we're being patient is what we're doing trying to take all the right steps to make the right plan to get get a shot on this deer so probably going to move camp at least a bivy camp and uh me and matt are going to get in there close tonight and see see if we can make it happen if not it doesn't feel right the wind's not right we'll back out because i really think that deer is in a spot that if we're just patient enough we'll get him killed in the next couple days so i'm morale real high usually when that happens it kind of comes down and then goes back up, but it's high right now. And that's where keep it on the red line. So maybe it's not high. Maybe it's just like climbing. We haven't got to the peak yet. Guys, we made it. Um, got the tent set up, got everything in. We're running a little late, but we're not bad. It's 3.30 now. That hike from camp, from our base camp to this camp was just about, right at four miles. And we left at 11.40. Got here about 2.30, got camp set up, and now it's 3.30, so we're about 20 minute walk to where we wanna be, 20, 25 minute walk to where we wanna be. And uh, this is gonna go down tonight. I have high hopes, man. Up over this, there's other. Bugs. 
bucks and they bedded. The last time we saw were bedded, he's wrapped around. I'm not worried about him right now. Unless he's already come out, which I don't think so. I'm worried about those other four bucks, so. I've given you guys a bunch of updates so far, and uh, we've done some B-roll. Showed you guys Bryce, showed you guys, showed you Bryce killing a buck. That makes sense anyway. Most important thing I haven't showed you guys yet. This guy. This is me. My uh, youngest son and daughter made this for me before I left. They tried to paint camo pants. It looked like maybe a camo shirt on him. But they gave it to me before I left. And said, take it with you, Dad. And think about it. So, I'm going to get emotional for this stupid thing. <laughs> so I've been up here taking pictures of him just everywhere. And sending them to my wife. And she's been showing them. I can't get a kick out of it, but, uh, and I absolutely love what I do. Love being out here with my buddies, chasing deer around, making cool content for you guys, but man, my family's everything. And it's cool that they allow me to come do this for a job. My wife, and she has to pick up a lot of slack during the follow-up. We're going great in this content, but, uh, just been looking at this little guy everywhere we went. I forgot to, to tell you guys about him. I think I'm gonna take him everywhere with me this fall. So, first up, Nevada. Next up, he's going to Alaska with us. I think I'm gonna have him put some pants on my backside when I get home. But, I think we're calling him Captain Casey. You guys like it? Okay. Now for your update. We're gonna, we got the good wind. This is what I told Matt. Storms blowing in, constant wind. I think we're gonna have that constant wind for another two hours. Now, I'm not gonna worry about the thermals. The thermals would typically drop when the sun starts to drop. But this storm's blowing in and it's constant wind coming up. That's what we want. The bucks are gonna be all below us, so we're gonna put the pressure on. This was the plan this morning. If the wind was right, we're gonna get right in on top of it, of a pinch point that he went into. And we're just gonna sit there until he comes out and we're gonna kill him. Come along with us. Um, me and Bryce are, we ripped up our old camp. So old camp is no more. And uh, so if you guys remember from this morning, those bucks we watched, the big three and the other ones that went up the narrow chute and on the left and went across what we call Lion King's Rock. So the boys are set up. So they're set up to make a play if those deer come back the same way they left, which being up here and watching deer and the way they move every night and every morning, they're pretty habitual.
That's for sure him. He's gonna walk right freaking past him. Okay, when he shoots, I'm gonna try my best, but try to stay on that buck. Oh, he's good. He's just smart, he's just looking. Dude, he's gonna walk right by them. Watching him? Yep. Stay on him. Straight down the hill. He's right there. He's not hit, dude.
And unfortunately, like our plan, it sucks to say, but our plan worked out just a little too good because he didn't go down that sage. He hugged the wall and walking in there, I noticed there was a trail that went up the wall and I didn't think much about it because I figured there was a trail going down the sage. But anyway, we got into a position and that buck, instead of going down the sage, he hugged the wall and he literally, like when I saw him, he was probably first at like 20 yards and he took a couple more steps. It's, it's cool to have the camera running because in that moment, you're, you're always like, sometimes you, not black out, but like you think you see things that maybe not happened. And in my head, what happened was I saw him and like I had an instant to make a call of to draw or not to draw. And what I thought was, if I don't draw, he's going to walk by us at five yards however far and when he got or, you know when he got close enough he was going to smell so just being that close or see us and bound off so I felt like he was coming so hard that if I drew I was behind that rock just enough that I drew he probably wouldn't notice or if he did he wasn't wouldn't be sure and take a couple more steps and I'd have a full frontal at like 15 15 yards uh we're back at camp it's been a long day um our biggest hurdle right now is just if we're gonna hunt for the next two days we're gonna be out of water probably tomorrow so we're gonna have to drop down and get some more water but that's what i told matt i'm like let's not worry about water let's just go kill this buck tonight and that obviously didn't happen so uh we're trying to stay hydrated without drinking all our water but we're gonna eat some food it looks like finally we're gonna have a nice night without crazy thunderstorms but again man that was heck of an experience something i'll never forget just watching that buck come around that rock wall at that close and being the type of deer he is it's just like wow this is it's just real life, but uh, man, redos on redos would be nice. This is day number seven for me and Maddie up here in the mountains. And I'm feeling I'm sore. After yesterday, man, my body is a little tight. But we're gonna head up on this glassing point. It's not too far from camp and see what we can find. We're gonna try to relocate the big three point, but if not, we'll find try to find something different and make a plan on it. Two days left. We're gonna push till the end, so let's go. Dude, all that is. Yeah, dude, I bet he lives in there. Can't see it. That's just a big meadow, dude. I think that looks right. So we, our plan was just to come up and observe today and try to find, relocate that buck, a big three, but if not, try to find something different. You know, we've got a day and a half left, so unfortunately that, you know, Plan didn't work on that deer yesterday, so we got to figure, come up with something new, come up with, with a different either plan or find a new target buck. So that was the that was the ordeal for the morning, and uh, didn't see much in this basin. We saw two little bucks in the basin that buck was in, and then on this other side we saw two little bucks. So kind of so I think this basin's had a lot of pressure over the last few days. We when we were hiking in last night we saw couple guys on horses take off they're headed back down but <laughs> it looks like they'd been in here anyway we started glassing this stuff here and something close by and nothing and then my wandering eyes took got best cut the best of me and i started glassing back this way kind of the direction we came from <laughs> from our previous camp and i just glassed up probably like i don't know the second biggest buck we've seen up here. Mm -hmm. He doesn't, he's not, gonna, he's not like a big score, he's just a big old mature deer, big frame on him. He's probably 27 inches wide, maybe. Crabby forks, but he's, dude, when I saw him through the pine, I was like, I just see his body, his gut, and his body just looks so much bigger than a lot of these other bucks we've been watching. I think I told Matt this morning, I'm like, we have one, one play left, or one, you know. We got to come up with one more play, you know, find a buck somewhere, make it happen. If it's not today, maybe tonight or tomorrow morning or tomorrow night. Anyway, long story short, we've decided to 
put Logan and Riser camp down at the bottom of this. And so we're gonna we'll go load up camp, drop down to the bottom, go meet up with them, and uh and then literally like where they're camped up, it is straight uphill for probably three quarters of a mile to a flat little ridge top. And then he's probably another 500 yards past it. So I think the plan is to load up camp, drop down there, eat as much of their food as they have left, drink as much water as we possibly can. And then we're going to make that hike up to the top and spike out one more time. I have high hopes. I do really have high hopes. Like, he's in a really good spot. It would just be nice if me and Maddie could get a day off <laughs> or an afternoon off, you know. But... We're here to kill deer, man. We're gonna do what it takes. But what I was just gonna show you guys is, so I'm sitting back, we're probably, again, two and a half miles from where the buck is. So what I like to do is, when I'm at this angle, I'll take a picture of <clears throat> what all that country looks like. So it's a wide angle picture of that whole like side of that mountain. <clears throat> and then, you know, that buck is up in here somewhere. And then what I'll do is I'll take a closer picture of right where we think that buck is. Because when you get over there, everything looks so different. So if you have some something to go back to, like a picture, and then you can say, oh, this is that white knob. He was right behind it. Or, oh, this is that white knob we looked at camping by. Whatever it might be, it really helps out. So anytime we spot something from a long ways away and before we make a move on it, I'm always trying to take pictures of, of the whole mountain and then a close-up of exactly where we're trying to get. And once we get over there and get a little confused, which we usually do, we uh, have something to reference. So it's like it's almost for your ear. <laughs> my, uh, if I don't air out my boots really well, after a few days of hiking, they get wet because I have sweaty feet and then they get hot spots and I got that yesterday on our 12 mile our 12 mile adventure so uh, we got back to the main camp and uh, Logie and Bryce are here now we're gonna head up straight up this hill it's about 600 feet elevation yeah. it's not too bad and about 800 yards and then we're gonna go after that buck we saw this morning hopefully he's there embedded and we can put a play on him tonight and kill him if not me and Matt are gonna stay up there tonight um, Bryce and Logan will come back down here so they can take care of the horses and then uh, if we don't kill them tonight we'll kill them in the morning and then we'll be done with this thing. So come along with us. Let's go wrap this up. Are we subbing in? three shooter bucks, possibly four in there. So uh, me and Maddie are just living on the side of the mountain. 
Bryce and Logan dropped down to the main camp, which is only like a thousand yards from here, but it's about a thousand foot climb. So it sucks coming up. That's why me and Maddie stayed here. And those guys have to go take care of horses tonight. So they're gonna be up here first thing in the morning to glass and we're gonna be glassing and hopefully we can find a buck in like an ideal location to put a stock on. I think tomorrow's gonna be our last day. So hopefully we can uh, find a buck in a good spot and go kill. And that would be great ending to this trip but if not man like I can't ask for a better eight days up here in the backcountry hunting mule deer That's going to be probably, uh, it is the end of the trip. We, uh, last day and a half, we said we had one, let's make one good stock work and kill a deer. And we'll find, you know, let's find the very best buck to, in the very best place to put that stock on. And unfortunately, we saw a lot of deer this morning. Um, like I said, it's at least six shooters that I'd be so happy with. You know, six of the better bucks we've seen up here all in this one basin. 
unfortunately, they just none of them just bedded in a spot that we felt comfortable or bedded in a spot that we knew exactly where they were at. All of them either hit the trees or bedded in these, went in these willows and we lost them. So we did our plan though. We, we uh, figured this buck we came in on was the very best chance we had. Like we had him somewhat pinpointed in a hundred yard radius or 150 yard radius. And that's the best stock we had. So me and Matt came in and we had the wind, we came above him. We took pictures before we left of where he was at, where we thought he was at. We came in and we were quiet. And then we just had, we just had a rock get away from us at the, I mean, we were, we could tell we were not in his bedroom, but we were close. Like we figured like 100, 150 yards at the most. The plan was just to sit down and kind of glass this stuff. It's real thick, but just glass it with for velvet. And if not, just set up. And because this is where we saw him this morning, this big opening, he was feeding in it and bedded in it. So we figured we'd just, if anything, we'd just sit down and wait and hopefully to get out and feed this way this evening like he did last night. Um, but we were coming down a super steep embankment and uh, had a rock get away. And I'm not gonna tell you who, but it, it's no big deal like it happens. And uh, after the rock rolled, I grabbed it. I sat down, told Matt to sit down, and uh, about, I don't know, a couple minutes later, a doe blew out, and then we heard him blow out. He snorted at us a few times and took off out of our dreams and our lives forever. No, this has been an absolute amazing, dude, how many days, eight days up here, nine days? Some of the most glorious country there is, especially to hunt high country mule deer. This is everything I've ever wanted in a mule deer hunt when I was a young boy reading books and watching videos about guys hunting high country mule deer. This is exactly what it was. And so I'm just very fortunate to be up here doing it. And uh, we've learned a lot, man. We've learned a lot of new country, learned a lot about high country mule deer hunting, which we always do, man. It's my third trip here. And, and uh, unfortunately, I'm not going home with a punch tag. But God willing, um, got a couple other things coming up here shortly that we're excited to share with you. But if uh, it works out, I'm going to try to make a bonsai trip back up in here for a couple days. Uh, maybe a solo trip if the camera guys are out on other stuff. So... Uh, for now though, man, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys felt the struggles and the successes and the failures and the wins. Well, just like we did. That's what we always try to do is just show you guys exactly how it is and how it goes because, you know, we've, I've always said like, let's just show the hunt how it happens because that would relate to more people because you guys know how a hunt is, man. It's roller coasters. We talk about it all the time. You, ups and downs and ups and downs and you go, you have to go through all of them really to find success or to find failure and uh hopefully you just learn through them and uh you're a better hunter through it and man I, i'll say this and i'll say it again and hopefully i'm a better hunter after this trip but um hopefully i'm just a better human being i'm a better dad i'm a better husband better friend because man the most important things i've ever learned in my life has been out on the mountains with somebody that you know i love and care about and that's exactly what this trip was so going home with a big heart a full heart and lots of memories and hopefully we can get back and kill one of these bucks but if not thanks for watching guys it's been a riot hopefully you guys enjoyed that video and uh can't wait to show you guys what's next